I'm sorry! That's enough, That's enough, dear. That's I'm awfully sorry. Fun. Hey, friends, it's Leslie. Welcome back to Holistic Health at Home. It is day 13 of this juice feast, and I did something I said I wouldn't until the end of this month. I ate something. <laughs> now, before anyone gets up in arms, let's talk about it. I wanted to take some time to talk to you about playing today. Friends, we are having this human experience. We're on this beautiful planet. And ultimately, we are here to enjoy ourselves, to play. Part of that playing is digging in deep and seeing what's possible with our bodies, but also knowing when to pull back whenever our bodies or our minds are really calling for that. This message of play is a friendly reminder that every day we need to be taking out time to do something that brings us real joy. A reminder that we really shouldn't be taking life too seriously. Friends, my husband and I went to Olive Garden today for a lunch date and we enjoyed their soup and salad. Out of all of the options that were available to us locally, I felt that soup and salad would be one of the best options. And for anyone who's asking if I ate the breadstick, you best believe I ate that breadstick in the next sorry. Now let me make it clear, this is not the proper way to break a fast. By no means am I recommending this. At the end of this month, when I do break this juice feast, I will show you how to properly break a fast. One of the tricks of getting into this lifestyle is understanding when you need a break. And this isn't just a physical break. This could absolutely, and more often than not, is a mental break. Even the masters and the gurus themselves say, if you need to take a break, do what you have to do, and then get back on board, get back on the wagon. And that is exactly what I'm saying. Sometimes we have these lofty goals in mind, and the only reason that we're going to push through and barrel through without listening to our bodies is because ego is getting in the way. Oh, well, I got up on camera and said I was only going to juice for 31 days. How can I possibly face everyone and admit that I ate something on this journey? I really want to break through this guilt over eating food. I see it as honoring my body and listening to my body and bringing balance when my body and my mind are asking for it. Really, my mindset was starting to shift and I needed some kind of mental break, something to play and enjoy and relax. The truth is, friends, when I'm not doing a deep detox, I live a plant-based lifestyle. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. I have zero guilt about that. I have found my level of balance in life and I'm simply sharing my experience of what has helped me and what has helped my clients. I share this life with a partner that does not live and breathe this lifestyle. A plant-based lifestyle is very new to him and it brings me great joy and happiness in this life to share delicious plant-based meals with my partner that he's never experienced before. This is just one way that I play in this creation. If anything, after that meal, I'm feeling mentally and spiritually recharged. I am ready to get back on the juice and crush the last half of this month. And sometimes that's what we need along our journeys. We have to understand when to dig deep and when to pull back. And today was a day I needed to pull back and simply play. Now, let me talk about some of the very real physical repercussions of suddenly giving your body a lot of food that it's not used to having. Within minutes of starting to eat my vegetable soup and salad, I immediately felt tired. All I wanted to do was take a nap because for the last two weeks, my body hasn't been digesting solid food. If anything, when I give my body fruit juice or a fruit and vegetable juice, I feel instantly energized and ready to take on the world. It is fuel that my cells can immediately use. But suddenly giving my body a lot of heavy food, all of a sudden my body has to use a lot of energy to digest or break down these solid structures that I'm giving it. My body has to then use even more energy to process that, absorb what it can, and move out what it can't use. Suddenly, my body is using a lot of energy just to digest food. 
instead of simply using the energy from the juice I give it. Oftentimes, when we start these healing journeys, again, I've said it before, it is way too easy to get that tunnel vision and to let your ego come in and control the situation. I've said it time and again, and I'll keep saying it. Listen to your body. Give your body what it is asking for. And if you're really craving that burger and fries, then by all means have the burger and fries. Get back on your protocol the next meal, the very next day. If you decide to break a protocol in a less than ideal fashion, just understand what you're in for. Be prepared for those physical repercussions. Again, this is not how you should break any kind of fast or protocol. And the physical discomfort that I experienced from that, friends, I got lucky. The physical discomfort other than uh, tiredness and feeling weighed down and bogged down, uh, wanting to take a nap, I had some kidney pain within 10 minutes of eating that meal. It started in the right kidney, moved over to my left, and that simply shows me that the tiny bit of protein that was in that meal was enough to cause some inflammation in my body and my kidneys were already starting to feel it. Friends, I have been drinking a lot more water tonight than I have the last two weeks because that food was salty AF. Speaking of water, I want to address some comments both in Facebook and on YouTube that I received from my video yesterday on how much water we should drink. When I posted that video, I didn't realize how inflammatory of a video that would be, especially when I try to keep things on this channel rather anti-inflammatory. Eh? Eh? Nothing. I feel like I may not have been as clear as I wanted to be in that video. And for that, I apologize, friends. My message on drinking water was in essence, we should be drinking water when we feel thirsty and we should be sourcing a vast majority of our hydration and alkalization from the foods that we eat, which would naturally be raw, fresh fruits and vegetables. They are the foods with the highest water content available to us. They are the foods with the highest electrical energy available to us. I got comments from every end of the spectrum, those that are very strict in this lifestyle saying, yes, if you're eating mostly raw fruits and vegetables, you really shouldn't need water. And I got people at the other end of the spectrum saying, well, we should be drinking a gallon of water a day. Now, if we break both of those arguments down, I don't find balance in either one of them. And for anyone that missed my day six video on balance, I would highly recommend checking that out. I talk about this precise thing of either extreme is really not healthy and it doesn't do anyone any good. We have to find our balance and our middle path in this life. And for everyone, that's going to look different. So when I say that we should be drinking water when we're thirsty, it's very natural for someone early in their healing journey to naturally require more water because they are more acidic and they are more dehydrated than someone who has been doing this lifestyle for a decade. That individual has had many years to uh, hydrate and alkalize on a cellular level. Their need for water to hydrate them is going to be very different than someone just getting started. So when I advise to listen to your body, that was my day 11 video for anyone that didn't see it, always listen to your body, always tweak as you go, and always honor your body where it is. If your body is asking for more water right now on your journey, then give your body some water. Just make sure that it's good, clean, quality water. If we take any kind of approach as a one-size-fits-all, it can be more detrimental than it is helpful. I don't think that giving someone the advice of drinking half of their body weight in ounces of water a day is taking a balanced approach. I cannot say for certain that a 120-pound person would only need 60 ounces of water a day. I mean, that's about eight glasses of water, which is what most of us have been taught to believe is a healthy amount of water. 
Likewise, I don't think that telling a 350 pound person that they should drink 175 ounces of water a day is balanced or healthy in any way, shape or form. Again, these approaches don't fit all. It is not a one size fits all approach, friends. Rather, telling someone to listen to their body, have balance, tweak as needed, and give your body what it needs, to me, sounds like a much more balanced approach. With all of this said, friends, by all means, if you ever have a question or a concern on anything that I say in these videos, do drop me a comment down below so we can all discuss and learn and grow. So friends, this is my very convoluted message to remind you to play in life, not take life too seriously. When you have to pull back, pull back and then get right back on the wagon. We're all doing the best we can and only the ego really cares about being right. And by all means, friends, if your body is calling for water, drink the water. <laughs> if you're looking for any kind of assistance on your health journey, send me a message on my website at holtox.com. That is H-O-L, dash tox.com. I'm Leslie sending you love and health.